Hello, this is FG, back with the 4 Ambinar. I, uh, there was an incident where there was a crash and I, uh, was recording. But I'll go just go ahead and read what we're doing. Missive after missive, diplomat after diplomat, nothing but complaints and grievances. How dare you kill the elves? That is their land. Your days are numbered. Bah. They know nothing worthy of a grievance. However, we cannot simply march onto the battlefield against these fools. That would be suicide, so perhaps appeasement is the only method. Leandel and Balin have come up with a proposal, a splendiferous masquerade. Given the resources they have devised, the greatest party Canor will ever see, although it will take time to repair the keep for such an endeavor. And we have just a little bit of time left. Um, basically all I've really done is all I've done in the sort of lost area was uh, build a few extra forts, uh, core, make some stuff states, various, you know, stuff like that. Work slave influx, stability. And then we want to do this. Nope, we are not royal marrying them. Alright, we want to also develop... Uh, yep, let the ogres in. So, build this. This will take us slightly over, but not by very much. Okay, and let me recruit a vampiric general. Not the greatest for the year, but it's acceptable. to station these boys right here. Really? I can't stand right there? Oh, right here then. I'm culture converting this. I did not mean to do that. Let's see if that still happens again. Worrisome. I did not mean to click away from that. That was a mistake. Um, additionally, we want that. Put them in. So close to having everything. Okay, nope. Take stability. Professionalism. Kind of want for defense. Take this.
wisdom. Alrighty. Is there anything I can do? Midnight hour. The sun shines, its final rays of scorching light and dusk finally settles on our kingdom. The hardships are behind us, but even darker times have set themselves on the horizon. Kings and countries know, or at least presume, our nature. So we hide our nature with a masquerade. We shall hold a grand masquerade for all those who have wronged us. This shall set our course and secure our place in the world, or utterly destroy us. Lucian appeared on the balcony of his mighty, mighty castle. He does not wear his usual conqueror's plate, but instead fashions an embroidered vest and is crowned to remind everyone of his stature. He begins, It is high time to address the concerns of our neighboring kingdoms. Our triumph has been bloody, and even those ready to forget our crimes against Elvenkind refuse to close their eyes to our slave trade. I, King Lucian Silnators of the kingdom of Lucian, Hereby declare a grand masquerade to be held in the castle in the silent repose. The celebration shall ease the minds of our future friends, and we shall use the time to discuss the troublesome matters and reach a consensus. Lucian shan't sh suffer from its past, but it is time to look for a future where our great land is not threatened by its neighbors. I have personally organized, orchestrated the grand masquerade to show these naysayers and skeptics our proud nature where we stand and where we stand in the world. We have gained our place with hard and honest work, and I will not let some silly rumor diminish that. Lucian will stand taller than ever after this event, and no one will be able to contest that. Lucian's speech was clear and the point as ever. Clear in Lucian's speech was clear and to the point as ever, but perplexing. The rumor of his tyranny seemed to be an over exaggeration of his methodical approach, and it is now clear that his iron fist loosens according to the country's need, not according to what he wants. Moreover, his practical mind takes everyone into consideration when reaching for a consensus. Lucian has proven himself to be a great leader and has the potential to be an even greater diplomat. A full report of a juicy foreign spy, Leandel. Centers of Trade. Oh. Uh, yep, Defensive Mentality. That will give our forts a base of what, 50. I am just going to, for no real reason, Defensive Edict, Defensive Edict, Defensive Edict. No real reason why I'm doing this. None at all. The Red Masquerade. A greater celebration is yet to grace the land. Noblemen and representatives of nations from all over Kenor have come to reside in the sil castle Silent Repose. Castle Silnators, or Nators. And revel in the joys of the, great ma of the Grand Masquerade. Tonight, 
On the fourth night of the celebration, King Lucian was going to address the most dire question of all, Lucian's, Lucian's warmongering and massacre of the moon elves in these very halls. Lucian joins the main hall from his own private carousing, where he only meets the most important delegations, or only the most important delegations have been specially invited to. He looks merry, but the glint in his eye seems able to pierce and kill. Dear guest, he starts with his well-known, booming, confident voice, I feel a I feel I have been remiss in my duties. I've given you meat and wine and music, but I haven't given you what you truly deserve. My kingdom has wronged many, and I owe a gift to show my regret. The nobles start clapping, but Lucian cuts them short. Behold, a moon elf who was there that night. He rises from his seat and raises a toast towards the main door, all whilst giving a slight smirk. The doors open, and a pale-skinned elf comes through the door carrying the decapitated head of a diplomat by his hair. She walks along the main aisles when the vampires disguised as servants pounce at the guests. Blood streams in the room like the autumn rains of Castanor. Leandel dances to the droplets' rhythms as she reach leaves the Reachman's head on the plate of the diplomat's partner. She continues skipping the to the beautiful cacophony of sorrow-ridden screams. Finally, she, with a single cut of the blade, slices, slices the head of three nobles daring to sit next to Lucian and pours their blood from her blade into a goblet. Leandel enjoys the show unfold with a goblet of fresh blood while joyously humming a tune. The blood ran through the castle doors. Alright. Yep. We are most definitely the baddies. What can we do? a free diplo policy. And we'll take that. Alright, that's pretty much my pet project finished. Okay. Start saving to get tech. I'll actually take that. Oh. Okay. Time to do some development. I want. Uh, yep, we'll take defensive stance. An alliance of man and elf. Our grand feast of blood and fresh warm meals was titled the Red Masquerade, and it got written down as one of the most horrid events in the recent history of Canor. Thus, an alliance of men and elves and their allies in Canor has formed a march against our armies, and on the very slopes of the Silent Repose, they intend to fight for the freedom of Canor. While the many nations still mobilize and combine their armies, we need to prepare. Silent Repose is, thankfully, easy to defend, but how will the Citadel fare against the armies of a whole continent? However, Orwick seems to have an idea. He is certain that, with enough time, he can test and prepare a ritual that will forever give Lucian the upper hand in a military conflicts. Okay. This is gonna be ugly. Um, in case you're wondering, that is what we look like right now. <laughs> um, the military situation is not exactly developed to our favor, as one man once said. What is this? 
This is grasslands. Okay. Let's go down there. These guys can... Okay, this can come down here. Okay, what are the casualties looking like? 120,000. Ugh, they close it. There we go. Okay. Now we just need to recover a little bit. I'm going to try and defend my capital area the most, since if that gets taken, I think it's over for us. First fort had to fall at some point. That is a very good general, and that sucks a lot. Uh, yep, we want army tradition. Yep, it's Woods Province. Oh, how long does this, this going to take? Yep, can 
does not like this half a mil or all right, sorry, about a million casualties on their side. Sure, we're too worried about trade right now. Moments to dawn. Lucian stands in the room watching Orwick do his experiments. When he is not needed at the War Council, he this is how he spends his nights. It bothers Orwick greatly, but daring to command Lucian would be the last word he utters, one way or the other. Orwick Lucian is throwing not Lucian is throwing knives at his deck neck with each syllable. Is it ready? No, my lord. I'm still trying to make the ritual work the best I can. Lucian only scoffs as to barely acknowledge the answer. A little longer. Uh, yep, I can do that. As long as we can keep them off our capital, we are fine. Sorry, clicked out. Uh, yep, we'll just execute him. Um... There's North Citadel. Sneaky goblins. Yeah, we'll let them in. Okay, Veil Fort. Who died? Yep, that'd be our consort. Uh, <laughs> yeah, war is not going super well, but let's look at the casualties. 1.1 million. Considering I'm fighting an entire continent. Go back here. My new volley infantry. Oh shit. That was a bad idea. That should have gone much worse for us. Establishing a domain. In the middle of the day, Orc rushes into the personal quarters of his liege, a preposterous ask. But this one time permitted by the king, it is ready. With these simple words, Lucian is already out of his chair and moving ahead of Orwick along the aisle. Lucian moves to the ritual chamber, the room most connected to the old curses of the land, and lies down in his prepared coffin. The ritual starts, the candles are lit and blown one by one as the shadows start to grow taller in the room. Where the old shadows collide with an all too... Sorry. Where the shadows collide... A all-too-well-known mist grows, the mist of the cursed woods. With his final chant, Orwick prepares a branch, taken from the cursed woods, and plunges it in, in next to Lucian's heart. The mist 
of Lucian rise and grow thicker. Soldiers sieging our cities and marching through our lands find themselves confused, surrounded by mist, and later outside our borders. Anyone daring to re-enter returns to where they entered, or they are never seen again. The war is over, for it cannot continue. The war will end and we will become invisible to our, all participants as mist covers our country. The cursed one and the, and the mists unite. Alrighty. So, that was the big war. Alright, uh, we're not quite... This isn't going to be a super long episode, because I am very tired, and it is 1am right now. But I figure this is a good place to stop it. Uh, I apologize for the long delay. I hope this episode was enjoyable, seeing me fight, <laughs> you know, everything. Did we even fight Bjarnric? Yeah, we did. Weird. Alright, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Uh, there should be an episode out the day after this comes out. So, I appreciate the uh, you guys being patient and just uh, watching my videos in general. Uh, thank you so much, and have a good day.